Thank you. Ooh, okay. They say that everything is bigger in Texas. We have bigger houses, we drive bigger trucks and cars, we sit down to eat bigger meals and become bigger people. <laughs> if this is true, that everything is bigger in Texas, then I must be the exception that proves the rule because everything is bigger in Texas but me. <laughs> I don't know if, if you can tell from where you're seat, sitting. Um, I was going to say the average American woman is five feet, four inches tall, and I am not the average American woman. But of all the influences I have had in my life, from my wonderfully loving family, to my crazy friends, to my education, my ethnicity, my gender, my travels and experiences, this one thing I had never really considered until now, my size. How my size has shaped me, because I've been small my entire life. And being small has shaped how I see the world. It's funny, I've, I have been asked before if I was a pygmy. And while I'm not quite a dwarf, being small has made me consider all of the world in a, in a very different way. It's changed how I see people. Um, it's funny because the clock is actually like right in my face since I'm so close to the ground that it's distracting me. I apologize for that. But when I think of, of my size and how it's affected me, um, it's made me think that bigger isn't necessarily better. We are addicted to this idea. We are obsessed with the big and it's had real consequences for us especially for us little people. And I'm not talking about the research that shows that taller people um, are perceived as more attractive or get bigger salaries. I'm also talking about how wanting bigger houses means that we move farther and farther away from city centers, which leads to increased sprawl and decreased green spaces as we pave over everything. I'm talking about how wanting to drive bigger vehicles means that we consume more fossil fuels which has a negative impact on the environment and increases pollution, which leads to our poor air quality and health consequences. I'm talking about how eating these large meals leads to potential health problems if not checked. That we get to obesity or diabetes. We're literally, literally killing ourselves. There's also other subtle ways that being obsessed with all things big affects us. It leads us to support and enact policies that prop up large corporations that make small businesses and local agriculture difficult to compete, much less to survive. It's funny, when people ask me um, how tall I am, um, I usually answer, not very. And it's, it's funny because people eventually feel comfortable enough to meet with me to ask me that, and I completely sidestep the question, and I don't know why, because I'm normally very fine and comfortable and have no reservations about telling people personal details about my life that women should normally not talk about, like my weight or my age or the last time I had a bowel movement. <laughs> I'm happy to tell you right now, I weigh 104 pounds. I will be 40 next year. Thank you, thank you. Um, and um, thanks to the coffee and granola bars, I went a few hours ago, so it should be safe to go in the ladies' room now. <laughs> Being small has had its challenges. Um, it's funny, when we think of the word small, we usually use it with negative connotations. We used to say things are petty, or they're limited, they're insufficient, or narrow. We belittle people by calling them small-minded, or small fry. We cut businesses down to size by saying, they're small potatoes, they're small time. When I was small, or smaller as the case may be, people called me itty bits, tiny dancer, smurfette, 
because I had a lot of guy friends, and I was three apples high. It got to a point where my Spanish teacher asked my classmates to think of more politically correct terms to describe my size. So they came up with little lady, or petite, diminutive, or my personal favorite, vertically challenged, because that implied that horizontally I was perfectly capable, but vertically, not so much. It's, these ideas, it's um, thinking that small things are, are negative, um, that have, really have a big impact on how we think. There's a psychology behind it. And I say it's time for us to reclaim small. Forget big, some of our greatest failures um, stem from wanting to be too big. I mean, you can look at Napoleon for that. Uh, some of our greatest achievements stem from focusing on the small. Ted has shown us small robots that can fly like a hummingbird and small quadcopters that can self-navigate, deliver great payloads, and potentially build structures on other planets. We have nanotechnology that is now able to encode data, store data in our DNA, and potentially could cure diseases at a cellular level. We also have discovered the Higgs boson, which gives matter its mass. And if you can imagine all the possibilities with that technology, we could, if we can manipulate mass, if we can manipulate matter, we could potentially face through walls like Kitty Pride and the X-Men. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> and I hope you are too. So, I kind of want you to um, go through an experiment with me. Remember when you were half my size and tilt your heads back. Please, tilt your heads back. Close your eyes. Remember when you were half my size. Imagine that you're looking up at somebody who's looking down at you, somebody that you admire, somebody that you love. How do you feel at that moment? Do you feel the sun, the warmth, beaming down at you? Do you feel hopeful, optimistic? Do you feel that the entire world is open to you and wonder what you can do to change it? Welcome to my world. This is how I feel on a daily basis. We just learned a few moments ago and this is a little bit why I'm kind of flustered, that Neil Armstrong just passed away. And I think he's one of the perfect examples of showing us the magic of small. That small acts of kindness can amass to a greater good. That small innovations can lead to great change in the world. And as he intended to say, um, at least as Wikipedia tells me, his true quote, his true meaning was, it's a small step for a man, but one giant leap for mankind. And I hope you are inspired by that and take that with you forward. Thank you. <laughs>